How's it going everyone, Zero Kimchi here, your source for WinLayer news and more. In this video I will be showing you the ins and outs of WinLayer Bionic, a new CMOD fork developed by Coffin Colors and Piss Blaster. It is taking a quite long time for us to get an official stable release, so I'm making this video for you to get acquainted with and prepare for what is coming. So again, this is a pre-release. Lots of things need to be kinked out, such as a working WoW64 which is currently broken for 32-bit games. That said, let's get started. Like usually, you just download it from the latest release post and install it like any other fork. Once opened and you take a look at the side menu, you will see a new entry, Adrenotools GPU Drivers. In here, you can install any of the Adrenotools drivers from my Adrenotools drivers repository and use them just like you would like any other emulator. I will explain more later. If we open the main settings and scroll down, we'll see two new notable entries. Enable dumping of Vulkan API calls to file, which is useful for developers to debug Vulkan and under the experimental category a few checkboxes use native glibc which we cannot adjust yet and use lori x server which is the name of the termux x11 compositor this was used to perform some tests on opengl based applications but will supposedly be cut out later as it is not needed any longer the main change on this fork is the ability to create a standalone glibc and bionic container. Once you start creating a container, you will notice a new toggle, bionic container. Enabling this will allow the container to use bionic libraries, which is a C standard library developed by Google. With this, we are supposedly a step closer to running applications natively. Now for the highlight of this video, we got a new graphics driver called Wrapper. I hope they change the name at some point because Wrapper sounds dull. I'll, I have to give it to Bruno for this one because Vortec sounds really cool. With this, you can finally use your system driver and Adrenotools drivers to run games. So this means that now GPUs that aren't supported by Turnip such as Snapdragon 710 I believe 720, Ada Lead and Mali GPUs can now emulate games properly. Well, properly. Their milliage may vary, especially for Mali with DirectX 11 games. Like this person here ran GTA 5 on a Mali device, which is quite a feat. So, if you are on a device with Mali, use a system driver selection. If you are on a turnip unsupported Adreno GPU, use the system driver or any Qualcomm proprietary driver from my GitHub repository. You can also just select turnip as the driver, but currently there is only one driver compiled for Bionic, and I don't think more are coming because Peace Blaster stated that Adreno Tools turnip drivers work better than turnip drivers compiled for specific libraries. Hopefully, we will see more improvements. This is far from done. The next thing you'll want to do is navigate to the advanced tab, ignore the box 64 preset setting and go straight to the effect score settings below. By the way, if you are using a bionic container, then setting the box 64 version in the main settings is not needed. Bionic containers use Fexcore, not Box64. But this might change in the future because Peace Blaster expressed an interest to replace Fexcore with Box64 because the latter is more compatible. So to continue, TSO mode is similar to Strongmem. Disabled basically is 0 Strongmem, fastest is 1, and so on. So for example, if you want to run Unity games with Mono Bleeding Edge, you'll want to use anything but disabled. X87 mode is Box 64's X87 Double, which controls the precision on X87 emulation. Unfortunately, it is still not clear to me what this variable exactly does. Sometimes this can be adjusted to prevent crashes in some heavy games. 
Multi-block is Fexcore's own thing. It might be similar to big block since according to documentation it enhances the GIT just in time compilation performance and the GIT runtime performance. This sounds like something good for Unity games with mono bleeding edge since that's basically Unity's GIT. However, with big block it is the opposite and mono bleeding edge does not like big block. I have tested some Unity games myself and it seems like multi-block is the way to go here. Now currently none of the start menu dependencies installs properly. Ignore them for now and just straight up boot your game. Lastly, Pitch Blaster made a change to the main hardware analytics of Winlater, the FPS HUD. It has a new look and works differently than DXPK and Mango HUD supposedly provides a smoother frame time when you lock the FPS. I have tested a bunch of games using Bionic and personally found many games to be performing smoother with Adreno tools compared to GLibc with Turnip. I'm personally very excited for the next update, especially when the new Box64 or the WoW64 fix gets implemented. It is expected to dramatically increase compatibility among games. So go ahead and try out these new features. This fork resides on an unofficial repository. I dropped the link in the description in the video below. I also would like to announce the opening of a new repository for Winlater related content. This repository is designed to consolidate all relevant information and resources into a single easily accessible location. The Issues section has been restructured into a comprehensive games compatibility list. Everyone is welcome to contribute. The Resources section contains links to all the relevant repositories of users and developers that contribute to Winlater. Links towards the Releases section to various Winlater files such as DXPK, Wine, Fixes for Games, etc. As well as documentation which I have not started writing yet, but will soon. If you do decide to contribute to the compatibility list, please read the compatibility list section and guidelines to prevent mistakes. If it is confusing, take a look at the existing issues and try to replicate what they do. Also feel free to contact me on the Emu Gear or Emu Play Zero Discord. If I missed something or wrote something wrong, let me know. Hopefully this will help a lot of people, especially for those who would rather have a readily available documentations and resources opposed to watching YouTube videos. And there you have it. Feel free to discuss anything we talked about in the comments below. Make sure to like, hit the subscribe button and share this video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.